Hi, I'm Dr. Chinmayee, consultant at Garbhagudi IVF Center. Today's session, I'll be talking about what is IVF and how the IVF is being done. First of all, I would like to tell you who in the requires IVF. Does all patients require? No. It's only a small subset of patients who is definitely benefited through IVF. Those who are married for a longer time, their age has been more than 35 years, the tubes have been blocked or they are non-functional, multiple times they have tried IUIs and it has failed, or those who have had multiple miscarriages. Among men, when there is uh, issues like uh, the sperm count is very less, or the motility of the sperms are very less, or when the DFI of the sperms are very high. These are the certain subset of patients who requires IVF. But how is this process done? So when I say IVF, it means in vitro fertilization. The word in vitro means anything that is done outside the body. If you look at fertilization, how it happens, naturally there is a, the egg gets released from the ovary and that egg gets been picked up by the tube and it remains inside the tube for 12 to 24 hours. That time when a couple keeps contact, the sperm travels onto the uterus, enters the tube, meets the egg, fertilize, and then it converts into embryo. And that embryo will transfer, will travel to the uterus after five days and attaches and grows as pregnancy. So this is what is natural pregnancy. So what we do in vitro or outside the body, what is done is, in these are the, the above said indications of patients who require IVF, in them, they will be given certain hormone injections. They are uh, not something to be worried of. They are just natural hormones that are produced in the body. Just at a slightly higher dose it is given, starting from second day of the periods for about 10 to 12 days. So along during that phase, she undergoes regular ultrasound to see whether the eggs are growing at a normal rate. In case it is slow growing or fast growing, the dosages of the injections will be adjusted accordingly. Once it is ready, then under anesthesia, a fine needle will be passed into the ovary to remove these oocytes or remove these eggs. Once these eggs are removed from the body, they are placed under the microscope to see for the quality. When we talk about egg quality, it is only through IVF where the egg quality can be assessed. And not on scan, not, can, nobody can assess the quality on scan, it's only the number that we can talk about. So when we do IVF and remove these eggs, these eggs are placed under microscope to see for quality. So once the quality assessment of the eggs are done, we will be able to identify how many among them are mature, how many are of good quality, average quality. So then we select the best eggs and into those eggs, the sperms will be taken depending on various methods of sperm selections will be done, depending on the type of abnormality the man has. Then these selected sperms can be fertilized in two ways. One is called ICSI, one is called IVF. In ICSI, what we do is select each sperm and inject directly into the egg. This improves the fertilization rate. Second thing is IVF, where the male factor is normal, where if we take a dish, the eggs are placed, sperms are also placed inside that uh, media, and then they are allowed to fertilize in the incubator for 24 hours. Once 24 hours is over, we check whether the egg and the sperm have got fertilized. Then we allow the embryo to grow in the lab for about the next 72 hours. So in that time, the embryo has to grow, the cells should start dividing, it will form itself. Then after on the third day of the embryo growth, we check for the grading or the quality assessment of the embryos will be done based on various features. What is the number of cells it contains, whether it has fragmentations, so what is their all of equal size or not. Based on these, a grading will be given. So then grade 1, 2, 3. Grade 1s are the best embryos, grade 2 are average, grade 3 are poor quality embryos. Based on that, the embryos will be frozen and kept. Sometimes we also, then these frozen embryos can be kept for about 5 years without any problems. Then the woman is given a gap of 1 month and after that, one, during this 1 month, we wait the, for the hormones to settle down. And the next cycle, we prepare the endometrial lining of the uterus and we choose the best embryo that has been stored and transfer it, to, uh, transfer it to our uterus. So once we transfer, after 15 days, blood test will be done to see for pregnancy. So this entire process will take about 3 months if we are doing a frozen embryo transfer. In certain small subset of patients, we do something called as fresh transfers, meaning once the egg is removed, after on the fourth day, 
depending on the embryo quality the eggs uh, the embryos will be transferred to the uterus the same cycle where the egg has been removed this is called fresh transfer so that is done only in a small subset of patients so like this the entire process of ivf might take around one one month sometimes up to three months minimum so uh, this is how the ivf procedure is done thank you uh, if you have liked the video and uh, kindly like subscribe and uh, share the video thank you Thank you.